so in part four of the model and sub series i'm going to look at uh, some extra workflow sort of tools not really essentials but definitely useful and handy to have and tools that you will use maybe not regularly or all the time but you definitely will use them and definitely good to know about them so the first i'm going to look at is grid fill this is native in blender but not in max you'd have to use a script like uh, border fill sword slayers border fill script or else uh, there's an older plugin um, rapid tools that had a similar uh, type of tool but it's not it's not built into max so if i select some faces here and i'll just delete them with that smart delete i was talking about in the last video oh sorry also maxives interactive tools and um, with the super smart create you can pretty much do the same and i'll show that in a video where i'm going to focus more on them um, on add-ons modeling add-ons including the f2 tool which is in blender you can just activate it in the add-ons from preferences and the other ones loop tools and a few other ones that I'd like to concentrate on in, in a separate video so back to grid fill you'll know by now that there's no border element mode sub object mode in blender so to select a border an open border like this you can just select the loop as you normally would select the loop and that will select the open border edges of the open border and then up to face and then grid fill and that's going to fill that in with all verts edges everything's connected up if i delete that again that was on edge mode so i'll go to face mode delete those again and I'll delete this and now you'll see that if I try to do a grid fill on this that's not really going to work out properly because it's odd topology it's not really a grid because if this extra piece down here it tries its best but you know it just isn't working in the same way if I selected something like this and deleted it and then selected the open border and try to run grid fill it's just going to give me an error so it's just something to be wary of so this next example is an interesting use of grid fill of you know, just in the last day or two kind of been messing around with as you know by now blender is unique in the sense that it can work with verts and edges that aren't connected up with faces in 3d space so you can take advantage of this sort of surface and kind of workflow but in a poly modeling setting so these are just uh, various extruded and arranged in 3D space. And you'll notice then that these spans, they all match up. They have equal verts. It sort of it has to be sort of a quad set up for this to work so that it, it, it's like grid fill where I just showed the simple example. When I added in the extra face at the bottom, um, it sort of failed. So it's the same setup with this. So if I select these two edge loops here in this case I'm selecting verts but as you already know <laughs> it's edges as well with the hybrid mode and now if I run the grid fill tool you'll see that it fills that in and the faces are flipped so I'm going to run machine tools to recalculate those normals and you can see it's filled it in quite nicely and then you know you could add subsurface um, or turbo smooth modifier as it would be in max on top and it's get pretty nice shapes there but very very simple just delete that modifier very simple underlying topology and you could model this pretty quickly as well but um, using this method and the grid fill it's worth experimenting with and i've even seen some people using it as in blender like a kind of a a surface and workflow that you might use in a, a CAD package. So next we look at bridge edge loops and the same thing. I'm going to make a similar selection to the grid fill example. Delete those and now I'm just going to select these edges. And up here edge, bridge edge loops. And you can see here it's just bridging like Max's bridge tool. And you can add spans just number of cuts set and match them up but obviously you know it's not going to weld these together in the same way that grid fill does and then you have other settings here that you can mess about with marriage factor smoothness profile and then the profile shape so that's it's just the same as pretty much as max's bridge tool but you, you do have more functionality 
and I'll show that in this other example here. So I'll just get rid of that one. And into edit mode. I'm just gonna press A to select all these verts and then run this tool again, edge, bridge edge loops. And now we get a better idea of where it might be useful. So number of cuts, and you can see it's behaving like um, Cephalo in Max, where it's interpolating between these um, to give you that rounded shape or curve. And then you can mess about with these settings here sort of a bulge factor and then the profile shape change that around for different looks merge is just merging all them together merging the two edge loops that were selected and then open loop and close loop sorry i thought the uh, close loop would uh, would cap that off but apparently not and that's pretty much the bridge edge loop still so next up here, I'd like to show the spin tool. And the spin tool might seem a bit insane when you first uh, start to use it. Um, Cause it certainly was for me, um, the widgets, but there's a few things just to know about it that makes life a lot easier when you're trying to use it. So I'm gonna activate the spin tool here. I have um, a face selected on the top of this cube. So I'll activate the spin tool. And you see here, a little widget pops up. So I'm gonna open up the end panel over here and go up to tool and here you can see by default it's on Y and whichever axis it's on just make sure to go up here into the tool panel and choose the one you want so in this case I want to spin around this face around this way so I'll have it on Y and I'll set the steps we'll say down to um, 5 and then as soon as I click on the on the plus sign on the widget here um, you can see it starts to spin crazily and this is why and then you might start pulling things around the widget and it just seems um, insane <laughs> for want of a better word so i'm going to just set this to 90 and this widget here we can then drag out and that's what it's it's centering around if you're wondering the 3d cursor so if I activate the 3D cursor, you can see that's where it's initially starting from. And then I drag the widget out here to change that around, to change the position. And then we can also flip it there with that part of the widget. And then rotate it with this part and then you can snap. And you can see over on the left there in the little modal window or dialog there, you can see the angle snapping. So I'll set that back to 90. So I'm just going to exit out of that by selecting box. And now this, I'm going to move the 3D cursor. So shift, right click, and then I'm going to hold down control and snap to these grid points. And now I activate the spin tool again with this face still selected and click the widget. You can see now it's using the 3D cursor as its pivot axis. So I'll set this back to 90. And then if I move the widget around off the cursor, it's going to behave as it was behaving before. And similarly, then you can just adjust the widget as normal. So you, you can use the 3D course if you want, or just when you first click on it, and just get the axis you want and use this yellow circle on the widget here then to move it around and then of course you can still adjust everything here i think that's just when you activate it so you'll have to adjust those segments here by the looks of it so that's pretty much how that works there and it can be a useful enough tool a bit obscure at first when you when you use it but it definitely can be useful so i'm just going to show the other option now so where a spin is operating on sub object or component selections the spin duplicates um, it's going to be operating on, on elements. So I'm going to select the whole, we'll say, element here of this cube. And then click on Spin Duplicate. And then we get a, like a circular, a radial array. And then we can move our widget around off the 3D cursor. And unfortunately, holding control here it doesn't snap the widget. So maybe that's just something that's been overlooked 
with the developers but you would expect to be able to snap the widget onto the grid but you can't so those two tools um, have the same settings and obviously you can use them for different purposes and you can see now because the tool is active it's it's doing it again and then if I click it's going to do it again here because of the nature of these tool panel tools they always stay active until you activate another tool so I just thought I'd show those two um, can be quite useful in certain circumstances so instance and objects in blender is called object linking and the hotkey is control l so i showed earlier on where you can duplicate anything with shift d but with this object selected I'll go up to object you can see there's shift d we have this duplicate linked and that's alt d so if i shift d this which is just a regular duplicate press y and then shift r to repeat last you'll see now that these are just copies like in max they'd be copies so at any point in the workflow it's non-linear you can instantiate objects you know with a backward history so let's say for instance um, you've you know duplicated this 100 times screws all over some vehicle you're making and you forgot to unwrap this first one or you wanted to make changes but you didn't instantiate these originally so you might have to you know instance them and you know replace them or whatever you have to do anyway but with this in blender you can do it at any point so if i select these two and then select this as the last selected object the active object control l and that'll bring up the make links menu and then you can link up any of these or instantiate any of these attributes from your object and transfer it back to these other objects so let's say for instance object data and then I come into this one, into edit mode, and then G, and you can see they're just like in Max, they're instances. So you can either do that at any point along the way, or you can you can just use the hotkey here, Alt D rather than Shift D, to have them as instances from the very start, and that's pretty much um, instancing or linking in blender so i wanted to show the shear tool down here the crazy hockey control shift alt and s but it's an interesting tool so if i select these four verts i'm just going to activate the shear tool you can see the widgets come up here so if you activate that with the hockey control shift alt and s it's going to come up as usual with hockey activated tools and you're going to have your your hotkeys up the top there So I'm pressing X and Y here if you look up the top to set the axis and then you have all the other ones down below there, the other hotkeys you can press, modify a key. So I'm going to right click that and go into the tool because the tool has these widgets as I've showed in other videos as well, only some of them do but eventually probably all these tools will have widgets in 2.80 or maybe 2.81 or whatever. So the widgets here, you know, you can, you now this would work. I'm just going to actually uh, go into edit mode, select everything, sorry, into edit mode, select everything. And I'm just going to subdivide these just to show the example. And I'll select these again. And control plus, I forgot to mention that earlier on actually, uh, <laughs> grow and shrink. Oh, in the selection video, would have mentioned it, grow and shrink or control uh, plus and minus on the numpad. And now I'll activate the shear tool and you can see it actually almost behaves like an FFD 2x2x2 two by two by two in Max which is quite useful and this is using uh, these widgets so some of them aren't going to do anything so you can just because of the nature what, what I'm trying to do here like it's only there's only really two axes or three that it can operate on so the thing about this now is it's at the moment if i press full stop or period for our, our american friends we bring up the pivot point point menu and you can see at the moment it's on active element and this is indicating that this vert is the active element so it's shearing around that's uh, that's the axis that it's shearing around so if i set this to the active element you can see the whole widget moves 
and now I can shear from that point and now you can see how it would be handy in the same way that the FFD 2x2x2 on a fade selection wouldn't max where you would move out the top of this no matter how many edge loops are here it's still going to give you this perfect um, straight line so that's the shear tool so last but not least certainly not least in this modeling sub series uh, the proportional editing tool and i love this feature in blender and i love it so much that i've asked for it to post it about it on the max beta forums and i've even posted up in the max ideas forums for max's soft selection to work like this uh, dynamically in the viewport max's soft selection is just annoying and ancient and this is really really simple to work and you're using it in the viewport so i'm just going to set it up here first so um, have these two verts selected e to extrude middle mouse button to lock the z control to lock to the grid click shift r to repeat last and then just shift r shift r shift r shift r and now here's proportional letting up the top shortcut is o hockey is o and these are the different fall offs you can set and then connected only is you know connected conti contiguous meshes or elements as they would be in max projected from view then is um, related to screen space so i'm going to press o there and you can see it becomes active and it only starts to work then when you um, you call a transformation so in this case i'm going to call a scale so s for scale and then x to scale on the x and now once it starts scaling as i roll the mouse it increases that fall off and you can see <laughs> you see how nice this tool is man i wish uh, max's soft selection behaved like this so similarly then I can just uh, press G and X to move and decrease or increase and it's just it's just such a user friendly artist friendly and intuitive way of having this tool so I'm not gonna lick its balls anymore and um, I think I'll just leave it at that I think you can see how, how good it is yourselves from those two simple examples right so hope you enjoyed uh, this sub series the sort of sub modeling series i wanted to break it down into all these parts to sort of go over as much as i could and remember i'm still learning this stuff myself so sorry if it was a bit uh, a bit fiddly at some stages but i hope i explained you know from my own learning experiences I'm in max donkey's years now well over 10 years so um, it's been a journey for me as well it's only been in the last couple of months but still i'm, I'm enjoying myself so i won't ramble on anymore i am wasting enough of your time so uh yeah hope it's been useful and um see you in the next part i'll be back to just the regular series then i suppose keep adding videos all right then cheers thanks good luck